Have you ever played games like World of Warcraft, Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot, or even Pokemon Let's Go and wondered how do they make the textures for the game's terrain? Don't you wish you can make textures like that for your game? Well, today, you're just in luck. Hello, my name is Codemaster Jamal and I'm an indie game developer. Today I'm going to be showing you the technique I use to create the textures I made for my game Virtual Monsters. Although this is a Unity tutorial, I will be covering a lot of general information about making 2D tiles for 3D games. And as such, this knowledge can be applied to the general art of game development. Without further ado, let's begin. To begin, start off by downloading some kind of editing software. Here's what I would recommend. Krita, Gimp, or Photoshop. One of these three specifically because they all have the ability to load Photoshop brushes, which is the .avr file extension. Unfortunately, this will be one of those moments that Paint.net won't be able to make the cut for this type of work, although I do recommend it for other types of graphics such as signatures, avatars, text art, banners, and icons. Today we're going to be making 2D tiles, more specifically a grass tile, which is the most basic type of tile we can make. I will explore sand, mud, and stone in future videos. After you have your software installed, you will need to hook it up with some brushes. The secret to making great 2D tiles for 3D games will be based around what type of brushes you have, as well as how well you use those brushes to paint your textures. To find Photoshop brushes, you will need to search two places. You can choose to look them up on DeviantArt.com, which is a place I frequently use for brushes, or you can use Brusheasy.com, which is another place I use, but not as frequently as DeviantArt. I will also say to use caution when downloading from Brashizi because it's not entirely 1% reliable as a resource. Next, in order to make grass tiles, you are going to want to search for leaves. Yes, that's right, leaves. Not grass, but leaves. Mainly because what you get from searching grass won't do too well with this example I'm giving. However, with the right amount of creativity, some of these brushes will work perfect for your project. When selecting brushes, remember to find brushes with a bit of opacity. This will help greatly with the definition of the grass. Next, we're going to search up smoke brushes. Why smoke, you say? Because today I'm going to be showing you not one, but two techniques for creating textured tiles. The second method can be used to make multiple tiles, which I will explore later. You can also visit this video by Tales of Knowledge Stone, which is where I learned how to 3D model my trees for virtual monsters. I also used the brushes he originally used in this video to design my first textures. Unfortunately, that specific set of brushes has been removed and is now virtually gone. However, the brushes that he left as a replacement would do just fine for the purpose of this video. Truth be told, all you will need will be the brushes found in that video in order to complete this tutorial. So if you don't want to deal with the hassle of selecting your own brushes for this tutorial, you can simply just download the brushes from this video. Now that you have your brushes selected, the next thing to do is to load our brushes into our editing program. Because this isn't a program specific tutorial, I can't tell you how you would do it in Photoshop or GIMP, and I will allow you to look at another tutorial so you can simply configure your brushes inside your own program of your choice. Once you have your brushes loaded, we can begin painting. Now when painting textures for games, rather it be a 2D game or a 3D game, it is important to keep the dimensions of your tiles at certain dimensions. These are actually very common dimensions you can find throughout many games and are used by many game developers. There are exceptions to this rule, but I like to call this rule the rule of two. That is that any square of two will result in a perfect square. Not in the trinomial sense perfect square, but a perfect square. And this should be applied to all your graphics for your games, as these are common dimensions for video game graphics. Alright, now that you have that concept down, let's begin painting. We're going to be making a 1024 by 1024 tile for a 3D world. If you're making a tile for a top-down pixel art game, I would advise you on using the 32 by 32 resolution or something smaller. Whenever I create textures, I usually create a second canvas with the same dimensions, in order to hold the different colors I selected. I know some programs have a way of saving this information, but for me, because I come from a traditional painting background, I prefer to lay out what colors I'm going to use beforehand. As for what colors you need for this tile, it's really up for you to decide what exact shades or hues. If you want a specific look for your game, I would recommend using the color picker to extract colors from a screenshot of a game. You really need only three to four colors, but in this case, they need to be ascending from light to dark. You'll see later that I went back and chose some additional colors in order to give my tile a bit more depth. 
For now, select the darkest color out of the four colors you created on your canvas. We are going to go to our tile canvas and then press W for wrap mode. In Crypto, we have the option of putting our canvas in what is known as wrap mode. This basically creates a reflection of our tile so that when we paint over it, what we paint is reflected on the other tile. This is actually the easiest way to create seamless textures for your game. Photoshop also has an option for this within their software. However, at the time, I can't entirely remember what the option is called. Unfortunately, I don't know how to recreate this in GIMP either, but I assume there's probably a plugin or something similar for it in GIMP. So you should definitely do your research into that. And if not, there's a traditional way of completing this exact same process with GIMP. Now that we have our canvas in wrap mode, we're going to press F for fill and apply our dark color to the entire canvas. This is going to be the background of our tile. And from here, we'll build and expand on everything. Next, we need to select one of our leaf brushes that we just downloaded. Once you have your brush selected, pick the second lightest color. I decided not to choose the other dark color I selected simply because the color wasn't bright enough to actually be seen on the background. After you pick your color and your brush, create a new layer by pressing insert. Now here's the trick to creating these tiles. The truth is, you don't really need any artistic skill at all once you've gotten to this point. There really isn't any secret at this point. While your canvas is in wrap mode, you can simply click randomly anywhere on the canvas. You can incorporate some fancy brushing techniques here or there, but for all the beginners and developers that are fairly new to CGI graphics, that's all there really is. Eventually, you want to create a second layer for every other color you come across. I would suggest leaving some blank spaces on the canvas to be filled in by other colors. But other than that, there's no real technique for creating these textures. The more you practice this technique, the easier it will be to create your own tiles in your own unique fashion. For the most part, that's basically it. You can expand on this tile by adding more layers and mixing it up with different size brushes or even rotating your brush. However, for the most part, as long as your canvas is in wrap mode, Krita or whatever program you're using should handle all the rest. As you can see here, I decided to mix things up by selecting some additional colors. This was to add a bit more depth to the texture, but it isn't entirely needed. I began brushing the canvas with a few short strokes, but other than that, I was using the same simple technique that I started off with. I'm telling you, this technique is incredibly easy, to the point where I believe even a baby could be able to do this. It's literally just point and click. Now that the tile is finished, I'm going to save this tile inside of my Unity project. Later I will show you how to apply these textures to an actual game. Our next objective is to show you how to create this same effect, but instead of using the leaf textures, we're going to use the smoke brushes that we downloaded earlier. For the most part, the process is the same. We already have our colors picked, so we just need to create our canvas, put it in wrap mode, fill the background with the darkest color, select the smoke brush that you choose, create a new layer, and begin painting. Like before, I am just randomly clicking on different points on the screen to create this effect. There's no particular order to where I'm clicking, because truth be told, wrap mode will pretty much handle any issues we might face if we were trying to make seamless tiles the traditional way. With this smoke brush technique, you can actually use it to create a multitude of themes just by changing the color scheme. So while we're using it to make grass today, you can use it to make snow, mud, or even sand. Even though I was planning on covering sand in another video, I'm going to spend some time to make a sand tile with this same smoke brushing technique. How I created sand for my game is a bit more tricky, but because I'm not trying to spend a long time creating tiles for this tutorial, I will create a separate video for how to make sand textures. As for the texturing part of this video, I'm pretty much done. However, for those of you who are Unity developers, stick around as I'm about to show you how to apply these textures to your 3D worlds. Within Unity, I created a folder called Tiles where I stored all my textures for this tutorial. If you're wondering, this isn't my project for Virtual Monsters, but instead, it's a project for an FPS Unity game that I have been working on. Due to a certain virus that I won't name and a lot of mishaps, I wasn't able to release this game in the week that I originally wanted. However, I will be releasing this game soon on a lot of different platforms. After we find our textures, the only thing we need to do to it is to set the wrap mode to point, no filter, and the max size to 1024. This is why I covered this earlier in the video about the different sizes of tiles. So if you use this technique to create a different size tile, then apply that size setting in Unity. You'll need to do this for every tile in your game, and at this point, this is where things in game development get kind of tedious. So we're just going to speed along this here. 
Now that you've applied all of these settings, you'll need to create a terrain to paint it on. I've already created a terrain, as you can see, but if you want to know how to create a terrain, right click within the hierarchy, go to 3D Objects, and then select Terrain. Importing textures on the terrain in Unity has changed over the years. Before, you could just load your textures right into the terrain and paint on your terrain at your leisure. However, as of later versions, things are a bit different. Now you have to create layers and then use those layers on your terrain. So to begin, I created a folder called Layers and then selected the paintbrush icon on the terrain inside the inspector. Then scroll down and select Paint Texture. There should be an option that says Edit Terrain Layers. From there, select Create Layer. There will be a window that pops up that will allow you to select one of the textures that you just newly created. When you select the texture, it will create a layer inside of your Assets folder. And by default, if your terrain doesn't have any textures loaded, it will make the default layer the layer you just created. Inside the Assets folder, there should be a layer called New Layer. I tend to rename my layers, but it isn't necessary. And there you have it. You created a texture in Krita, imported it to Unity, and applied it to your Unity game. It's that simple. It took a while to explain it, but you will need to repeat this process every time you create a texture for your game. This is a great way to create beautifully textured painted games in Unity. And in the long run, it actually gives your game kind of that AAA kind of look to it. If you've been following my devlog, you'll know that I've spent a very long time creating all the textures for my Virtual Monsters game. In fact, it's what most people tend to compliment me about when it comes to my game. I've had this secret for a while, and now I'm sharing this secret with a lot of you. I hope you can take this secret and expand on it. I guess in a way, if you ever wanted to create a AAA type of game, or at least a game that looks like a AAA game, then this technique will definitely help you do so. Well, I guess this will be it for today. It's been nice teaching this lesson to you guys, and I hope to upload more videos soon. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and make sure to subscribe to my channel, as it will help with the investment of my game. Till next time, this is Codemaster Jamal, and I'm signing out. Season 2!